What's going on, good people? Hope all's all is well. The mic sounds nice. Check one. What's going on, Hendo? How you doing today, good brother? Chilling. What's up with you? Good, good. I can't complain, man. Today's episode, we're going to talk about living hip hop and what that means to us and possibly y'all. We're also going to talk about um, Master C. We're going to talk about G Depp. We might even talk about Diddy. Stay tuned. Check us out. Bro, how about this? Earlier today, right? Mm-hmm. I decided to throw a clip on TikTok and IG. And this particular clip rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, bro. I'm going to play the clip, right? Let it sink in. And then we'll talk about it. But today's topic, man, I believe it's going to be a good one. A heavy one. So, all uh, right, let me find this clip. Hip hop. Hip hop has done more damage to black and brown people than, than racism in the last 10 years. When you. When you find the youngster, a Puerto Rican from the South Bronx or a black kid from Harlem, who has succeeded in life other than being the one-tenth of one-tenth of one percent that make it in the music business, that's, that's been a success in life walking around with his pants around his ass and with uh, you know, visible uh, uh, t- tattoos or, you know, it's, it is this whole ethos at some point those guys have to cop to the fact that by encouraging this distinctive culture that is removed from the mainstream they have encouraged people to be so different from the mainstream that they can't participate other than you know uh, the racks in the garment center and those entry-level jobs and i i lament it i really do i think that it has been very destructive culture now before we get started that was a lot to digest. For y'all that don't know, that was Geraldo, lawyer, talk show host, um, journalist. Brand that, was, <laughs> that was his views. What's your take on that? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't think we got enough time for my takes. Mm. But... Like Brian just said, hip hop being removed from mainstream is quite hilarious because this world operates on hip hop, advertisement, movies, even sports. Everything is influenced by hip hop. But for me, you know, I've known about Geraldo for at least a good 30 years and I've heard other segments that he's talked about. And this it was things outside of the realm of music. And he's clearly a racist. Clearly. He's of Hispanic descent, but he does not like black people. And it's well documented. But to me, for him to single out, hip hop is the reason that the black community is not thriving, which we are. We have a sector that isn't doing well, just like every culture, every race does. I didn't hear him mention anything about punk rock or grunge, the mosh pits, the violence that it incites. You know, certain things like that. They don't talk about the the rock and rollers that wear tight leather pants or have half skirts on, men wearing lace panties. And they, like, you know, it's a bunch of things that every culture does. But he kind of put a magnifying glass on the black culture, as he's done throughout his career. And he's trying to make a point, but the music that you listen to has nothing to do with your success in life. Because to be honest with you, and especially in Baltimore, especially South Baltimore, you're going to see more white boys with their pants hanging off their tail than the black boys. He's not going to explain that. And But it is crazy. I'm not going to, listen, that's one thing I will say I don't like. Yesterday, listen, they know, Sunday, Sunday I was in Howard County. Mm-hmm. Early morning. Went to Silver, Silver Dine or whatever, get some breakfast. Mm-hmm. Leaving out. I promise you, I saw this 55-year-old man with his pants hanging off his butt. Mm. And when I mean hanging, I don't mean like, you know, you just showing. Like, they were literally down 
to his knees. Mm. And I said something out loud, like, yo, you too old for that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But individually, no matter what race you are, we all have our own minds. We have our own thought processes. And a lot of times, a lot of us do emulate what we see on TV, mainstream media, and all those other things. But in the same vein of him speaking about hip hop and the music and the videos, I don't hear him talking about the successful black people mm -hmm. that may have watched a certain TV show or a documentary or been inspired by certain movies. Mm -hmm. He's only coming at you from, <laughs> he's always coming at it from the negative side because he has a point to prove. And once again, being that he's of Hispanic right. descent, you know, I, and I'm not singling anybody out, but I didn't hear him talking about the people that have the tattoos all over their faces. Mm. Or get the gauges in their ears that are yay big, and they take them out. And their earlobes are just hanging. Like you know, people pick and choose the narrative that they're trying to push, and he clearly has one. Because I think it was a point in time when he was trying to run for office. Mm. So mm. you know, when most people run for office, they have to build their platform on a certain sticking point. Mm. And his sticking point, I think, at that time was something about cleaning up the streets, getting rid of certain things, and of course, as always, we were the targets. Mm. Mm. But just like today. As in, and you sent me the clip last week. As mm -hmm. soon as I heard Geraldo's voice, mm -hmm. I zoned out and was like, I don't need to hear what he said because he's been saying it for the last 30, 40 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I second everything you said, man. Before I go on, man, I want to say this, man. Shout out to everybody that comes through every week to show me love. B, Elon, Reg. Man, I greatly appreciate it. I'm sure Hendo does as well. Much love. But back to Geraldo, I was beside myself when I heard what he said. Because I feel like the world, society, got hip hop all wrong, man. And they said that uh, in, in one part of the clip, he said something to the extent, right? We don't adopt society's culture, you know? And I agree to an extent because. We were robbed of that culture. I'm sorry, you, you kind of went out a little bit. I didn't hear that correctly. What did you say? You agree with that? I said that Geraldo said that uh, mm -hmm. we don't um, pretty much adopt society's way of thinking. Okay. Do I need to, uh, do I need to it's justify about you? I mean, expound on that because I, I mean, I okay. agree with you. I agree with you to an extent, but I'll, I'll let you go. Before okay. I, you know. Yes, yes. I believe we were robbed of our culture. We had to adopt everybody else's culture. I believe hip hop was one of the closest things to us becoming who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's a the closest thing is a reflection of us and our views and thoughts in society. Right, right. You know what I mean? And I think universally, everybody has that variation of course so what were i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off what were you about to say about it? you didn't cut me off you were talking okay i just yeah. wanted to, i just yeah. wanted to hear where you were coming from and i can understand holistically where you're coming from all that mm -hmm. you're saying mm -hmm. but for me uh, certain people in here i can't say what i want to say but for me it's horse crap it's horse manure mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. first first and foremost how can we not adopt or conform to something that we created Mm. Everything European has been stolen from us. Mm. Everything mm. under the sun, everything under creation. We started it. We started life. Mm. Life began with us. See, when you start telling the truth, bro, mm. wow, fireworks. We started everything. So how can we not adopt what they're pushing? It's just that we're not doing it the way they want it to be done. Mm. And the way that they want it to be done is they want us poor and ignorant. You know, they could talk all of this stuff about, you know, they want the generations to continue on and each progress more. They don't want us to progress mm. because we've had this discussion before. They are afraid of us. Mm. They had a 400 year head start in everything mm. and everything. And we came and surpassed them. So mm. they were afraid of us. So they're looking for any way they can to hold us down. And like, like we had a conversation before about, you know, the views of black people around the globe. 
they do this to continue to push that narrative of, oh, you see, this is why they're stuck in the situation that they're stuck in. They're in this victim's mentality. They're pushing the narrative because we don't have that platform and we don't have that media outlet to push back and say, no, nah, bro, that's not how it is. So if you keep the world ignorant to what's going on over here, they're going to believe whatever the masses say because this is all that they see. You go, mm. certain, go to certain countries, they can only get certain stations. Now, it's a little different now with YouTube and all the social media platforms. But before, they had limited access to media. Right, right. So the media that they saw told you that we were dumb, we mm. were lazy, we were mm. ignorant, we were rude, mm. we were violent. Mm. Yeah. But they never spoke to the people that live with us. Mm. We've had this conversation about us, and we were just talking about before we came on, about assimilation. Absolutely. Trying to assimilate themselves into a culture because they think they're getting a seat at the table. Right. And I right. said before, and I'll say this again, when you get at that table, yeah, you can get a seat there for a second, but as soon as you turn your back and leave, mm. they're going to talk about you like they talk about us. Because I've been there. I've been in those houses mm. where after things shifted a little bit and they talked to me like, yeah, these Mexicans, yeah, these Asians, yeah, these that. And I'm just sitting there looking at them like this. Mm-hmm. Because mm. as soon as I leave your house, when one of them comes in, you're going to talk about us like that. Mm. So, you know, it, it it's all a bunch of baloney and it's all a game. But a lot of people can't see through that veil. Mm. They can only see what's put right before them. But to reiterate my point, we're the creator of everything. Mm. Music, culture, mm. law, travel. Mm. We created it all. Without mm. us, they wouldn't know how to navigate the world. Mm. You know what I mean? So... You know, and that's why I don't I don't pay Geraldo any mind. Like he can miss me with that. Facts. Well said, well put, man. Well, how about this? Cause I'm going in on it today, man. Check out this particular person's thoughts and views on us. Cannot be black and proud and two. Mm. White folks are planning for three generations and we're planning for Saturday night. Mm. The goal for us is to win, not to look like we're winning. I would rather carry a plastic bag with $5,000 in it than to carry a $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag with $100 in it. You just looking like you winning. You ain't winning. Louis Vuitton is winning. Nike's winning. Armani is winning. Gucci's winning. It is interesting to me that rich, the rich stay rich by pretending to be poor. Uh, and the poor stay poor by pretending to be rich. And if we do not fix this level of financial illiteracy, lots of reasons why we are at the bottom of every single economic statistic that matters. Yo, I'm going to say this, bro. First, wow. When I, when I first heard it was a lot to digest, both of those clips to me was truly a lot to digest. But is perception reality? You know, like, like, like let's just use this. Let's use Trayvon Martin for a, a, a second. Mm -hmm. Today I have on a hood. Right? Trayvon Martin had one on that day. He's walking, bag of Skittles or whatever. He was perceived to be a thug, just a kid, a hooler, just a kid. Sometimes when I'm out in public, depending on where I'm at, I might get looks, like questionable looks, mm -hmm. a clinching of the purse, a crossing of the street. Right. I ask you, bro, is perception reality? No, it's not. You, we, we of all should know um, the line of work that we've done mm -hmm. over the last 20 years I ask you this how many times have we gone and seen a Porsche mm. a Bentley mm -hmm. something hot outside mm -hmm. but we walk into the house mm -hmm. and they got a hole in the floor mm-hmm well, we've gone to that million dollar home mm -hmm. and told that customer, yo, your TV's broken. Hmm. It's about 40 years old. It's time to get a new one. And they throw a fit. Mm. Clearly, they're millionaires. Hmm. They fret over buying a $200 TV. Mm. So we've had this conversation and we just had this conversation. Yes, we did. 
we just had this conversation. It's hmm, what the man said was 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 factually correct. He said yeah. what he said was true. Um, I would rather have five thousand dollars in a plastic bag than have a Louis Vuitton bag and nothing in it. Mm -hmm. But to us, material items are acceptance. Mm -hmm. We talked about this before. When I buy the cars, when mm -hmm. I move to the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. when I wear certain clothing, I'm telling them, look, I live where you live. I mm -hmm. shop where you shop. Mm -hmm. I work where you work at. Love me and accept me. It's, mm -hmm. all, it's all a mentality. And unfortunately, this is the one thing even through generations after generations it's the one thing we can't overcome it's mm. the one it's the one thread that we can't just put back together because we need we need for some reason we need to feel that acceptance by mm. other people mm. by, by any means now, however you get it is how you get it that's why you know we're gonna keep it a buck we know some drug dealers mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying allegedly we know some drug dealers. We, or we've known. We maybe not now, but we've known some drug dealers. And with some of them and the amounts of money that they were making, mm -hmm. they could have kept quiet, mm -hmm. stayed dough, moved on, mm -hmm. and lived a happy, healthy life. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them had to floss. Mm -hmm. A lot of them had to be out here. My thing is, how are you going to sell drugs mm -hmm. but get a car with your name on the license plate? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you advertising who you are. Like, cops don't even have to do any work. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, there he is right there. So, mm -hmm. you know, for us, it's about proving that we're, we're worthy, proving that we're worth something. We don't get self-worth. We had mm -hmm. the conversation before once again about um, with the Louis and the Tommies and mm -hmm. the Ralph Lorenz and all them calling us apes, mm -hmm. saying I don't make clothes for them. Mm -hmm. And we sit there and we go, Ugh gasp mm. how could they say that and we're mm. in and we're in shock for a, a cool 45 minutes mm. and then we go right back and buy their stuff all over again and he's right we're making these companies billions mm. while they're not investing any money back into our communities mm. we getting in music videos we getting on shows tvs youtube wherever and we're promoting all of these brands that aren't promoting us mm. so mm. you know it, 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 it's, it's a twofold thing there because we tried mm -hmm. to, to to support black businesses, mm -hmm. and I'm not going. I'm not going. Kind of dash the hopes of all of them, but a lot of black businesses aren't up to par. Mm -hmm. They say don't ask for a discount, but you're giving me. You know, what I mean, give me some hood. Give me some hood service. Mm -hmm. So until we start doing better, as the consumer, and as the proprietor, it, it's not going to change. You know what I'm saying? All of these things are names. I've seen design I've seen designs that people made in their homes. Mm -hmm. Other than some of the stuff that they put on these runways. Mm. Because it is a name, it has to be sported to mm. make better about ourselves. And it's a lack of self confidence. And it's not a lack of self confidence as us individual as us individually. It's a lack of self confidence of us as a people, of us as a culture. You know what I'm mm. saying? We suffer the greatest mental beatdown of anybody in the world mm. talked about this before as well mm. black people black people in france they're not called black french it's called french mm. you know what mm. i'm saying i do i black, do black person born in asia mm. they're just asian they're not black asian mm. but only here are you described as afro-american mm. mm. i don't hear caucasian american mm. I, don't hear, I don't hear caucus american mm. You know what I'm mm. saying? So mentally, we just have so many hurdles to overcome. And we use retail therapy, unfortunately, as ways for us to overcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, you know, uh, I'm going to piggyback off of it. Uh, and then I'm going to rewind a little. Um, my favorite saying, one of, learn behavior. When mm -hmm. I was growing up, when I was a kid, young, young, I had love. You know, mom, dad in the house, grandparents, I was blessed, right? All I know is that I was loved, my sister was loved, and that was it. When I was old enough to jump off the porch, mm -hmm. that's when things were brought to my attention. What kind of shoes you got on? What kind of pants are those? 
you know, as a kid, and I've said this before as well, we like, it's just a shirt. It's just a pair of pants. They had just a pair of tennis that I like that my mom got. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of the end for someone like myself. Because I like nice things. We talked about this in the intimate space. I, I love nice materialistic things, right? And somewhere down the line, at one point in time, I let those things define. You know, but it was growing up, like you said, saying the local hustler, saying that the girls liked it. Because let's keep it a buck. Who was the girls looking at? They wasn't looking at the guy with the holes in the sneakers. You know what I mean? They wasn't looking at the guy that couldn't put an outfit together. They was looking at that local hustler getting it. So I believe a portion of it, not blaming the hustler, because I see the other part of, part of it too, because like you said, we grew up with everybody. I'm going to no. just leave it at that. And a lot of times, man, they come from impoverished conditions. Mm -hmm. A lot of times these guys are doing what they got to do to feed their family, help their mom pay bills, keep a roof over their head. At certain points, it was a necessity. But we wanted to say we arrived as well. Right. So it is a twofold. Going back to what you're saying, a lot of people had head starts. We didn't. We're playing catch up. You know what I mean? So I think it's it's a plethora of issues with all of this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, we could blame a little on ourselves. We could blame a little on, on society itself. But it's it's an issue. It's an issue. I'm unsure if it's going anywhere. I'm gonna blame. I'm gonna blame a lot on ourselves. Not a little. I'm gonna tell you a story. So, growing up, once again, was the poorest person in the middle class neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The poorest person in the middle class neighborhood. I had holes in my shoes. I had jeans that had strings at the bottom. Every time you pull them, they get higher and higher. Mm -hmm. Till they became capris. And we didn't know what capris were back then. Mm. The one thing for me was, I went to a middle school in a Jewish neighborhood. And this neighborhood separated middle class, upper middle class. So you had both house, median household incomes converging in the school. Mm. And when I tell you, them kids was merciless. Mm. Not the black kids. Mm. No, it was a couple. It was a couple of them. A couple of them, but the Jewish kids. Wow. But they weren't just merciless. Just because I didn't have certain items to wear, they were merciless because I was smarter than all of them, mm. and all the little Jewish girls like me. Mm. Like you talk to my wife now, she'll tell you she's like, "Yeah, hey, you had all them little chicks following you." Mm. Like I didn't really care. So for me, that could have been a turning point for me when I got money to say, you know what? I need these things to look better and feel better about myself. Mm. It takes something in you because for me personally, I've always had my intelligence to fall back on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when you made fun of my clothes and you said something about where I lived and, oh, my mother didn't have a car and all these other things, I could say, you know what? Look at that test score and let's look at yours. Mm. With you and all your money and your background and your history and your tutors, mm. what you got next? Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't let that define me until this day. Mm. I couldn't care less. And I, and I guess it's, it's from my, I guess maybe it, it comes from seeing people struggle. You know, you know, there have been a lot of households that struggled, but the kids never saw the struggle. Mm. I saw my grandmother struggle to take care of eight kids and two grandkids by herself mm. and do the best that she could. And when I needed something, when I had the holes in my tennis, she's like, I'm gonna make a way. And she went and got me some, she went and got me new tennis mm. or she bought me an outfit to play in the band or she bought me a trumpet. Like she did certain things and I saw this struggle. So for me, it's always been, yo, I couldn't care less. Mm. 
Mm. I could not care less. I got to, I wear like I have so many clothes now, and it's mm -hmm. not all because of me. Mm -hmm. But I have so many clothes now, and I guarantee you, I can probably name the seven articles of clothing that I wear weekly. Mm. Hmm. The tennis, we had the conversation about the tennis. I had some tennis for about seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. They didn't really get messed up because I didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, I didn't care. I was 40, 42 years old. By the, the first time I bought a pair of Jordans. Mm -hmm. 42. Mm -hmm. I think I was 46 the time I bought my second pair of Jordans. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to be 58 by the mm -hmm. time I buy my third pair of Jordans. Because mm. it's not important to me. I don't have to look good for anybody. I don't have to drive a certain car. Man, before I got the car, I have now. And knock wood, last payment. Bah, 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 this much. Um, before this car, I had a 1998 Mercury Sable. Mm. 98 Mercury Sable. I, mm. didn't, I, I ain't even had a blip blip to get into the car, bro. I had to, I had to take my key and open the car door. Mm. I had to roll the windows down. And you know what us, we was mm -hmm. working with some dudes that was buying some some of this and some of that. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? And I, yeah. would, I would gladly go everywhere I needed to go because I'm not out here to impress anybody. Because these same guys, and I worked as a correction officer, and I worked with some guys that bought Escalades when they first came out. Mm -hmm. That was the hot thing for the COs, Escalades when they first came out. Because mm -hmm. when, when you were a CO, you could work as many hours as physically possible. And mm -hmm. there were some people that would work 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. But... When it came time to go out, it was always yo, Hen, you got gas money? Mm. You got the brand new Escalade. What you talking about? Right. Ah, you know, I only got enough to make the payments in the car in the, in the insurance. Mm. So for me, it's always been about yo. I couldn't care how you feel when you watch me drive in my car. Right. Because you're not needing to get to where I need to go. You're not paying my bills. Mm. So yeah. for me, just the the. Everything that happened in my childhood shaped me to be the person that I am today. And unlike some, it had an effect where I don't need to prove anything to anybody. Mm. I'm comfortable in my own skin. I'm me. God made me the way he made me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Whatever, whatever my flaws may be, so what? Mm. You don't pay my bills. You don't make me happy. You don't affect my life. So it, it has different effects on everybody. So I just say we as people need to take more accountability as to the, the traumas that happen once again no matter what's happened to you how deep it goes down there comes a point in your life where you cannot use it it's a statute of limitations on excuses mm. for me person mm. where you have to say you can't say well you know yo, i ain't had much growing up mm. you know what i'm saying me personally the one thing the one the one vice that i had that i had to wean myself away from was because i was so poor and a lot of people don't know this because, you know, they never heard this phrase before, but it was pretty much like, oh, my, what's for dinner tonight? Uh, uh, sleep for dinner. All mm. righty. Mm. I guess we get sleep for dinner. If y'all yeah. that don't know, that means you actually take your butt to bed and mm. wake up the next day. Mm. So for me, the vice that I that I encompassed was when I got older was I'm going to buy the food that I want. Mm. No matter what it is, no matter what the price, mm. I'm going to eat the way that I want to eat. Mm. And then I realize I'm spending way too much money on food. Mm. And I'm spending money that I'm I can't afford to spend on food. Because mm. you know me, especially if you with me, I'll pay for you to eat. That you will. I, I never had a problem when it came to go eat. Mm -hmm. I never had a problem with price. Mm -hmm. But say to me, hey, bro, let's go on a trip. I ain't spending all that money on no trip. Mm. So, mm. you know, we, we all have our own vices. But once again, it comes a time in life where you just got to say, you know what? enough of the excuses mm. i need to do what i need to do and none of this is helping me and it's not bettering my life in any way form or fashion because mm. the people you're trying to impress are out there trying to impress people too how about that how about that i'm gonna say this first of all i applaud you for having the strength and the understanding right um i saw on the talk show i'm paraphrasing uh, it was a talk show about finance, and the young lady said, the next time you want to purchase a big ticket item, calculate how much that is, and then calculate how long it took you to work to make that amount of money, and then ask yourself, 
is it worth it? So I'm going to leave everybody with the fool of thought with that. But check this out, bro. Oh, bro. Ian W. A. Ice Cube. CB4. Was the lead guy's name Gusto? Yes! Nigga was a perpetrator. Why Gusto and his whole crew weren't real gangsters? Is being gangster the black thing to do? Before you answer, right, we're going to talk about what's going on in hip hop right now. So you got the J. Cole scenario we talked about last episode, right? How J. Cole went out there, said a few words, and I guess he thought about it and said, you know what? I don't want to go that route. My bad. You know, and then now Drake is coming out saying things and, you know, everybody is involved. And, it, and it's, 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 it's dope for the culture of hip hop because we love battle rap. I mean, that's one of the nucleus of the game. But on the flip side of it, we went through the big and pop thing. You, you get what I'm saying? And, and, and several others. Is it gangster? Is it the black thing to do? Do we need to be tough? Do we need to walk around with with with, with mean mugs and, and, and ready to fight? Can we walk around smiling? Can we walk around laughing and joking? Can we show our sensitive side? What's your thoughts, bro? No, 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 no. Mm. Answers no to everything. Gangsters. Is it the black thing to do? No, because, you know, the portrayal of the first gangsters were white, Italian. Mm. You know, they were what gangsters were supposed to be. Mm. We are, more importantly, the question should be, is thugging the black thing to do? Mm. Not being a gangster, being a thug, because that's what they like to label us, but mm. it's not the black thing to do. I mean, everything that we do, every other culture does. Mm. All of them. So. It's not. It, it's, it's a bunch of nonsense. It's something that's been perpetuated by the media, once again, to make us look a certain way to have people fear us. Mm. Because if, be, if they see us as the welcoming people that we are, mm. which we are, because we are the most forgiving people on this planet. Mm. We are the only people on this planet that will 100% unequivocally forgive people that have done us so foul for mm. so long and continue to do us foul. And we mm. still forgive them and we still embrace them. Mm. And you know, and you can ask any minority other than us that comes into our neighborhoods and watch how they're protected. Mm. And I've, if you and if you don't believe me, you can look it up on the internet and see the people that'll be like, "Yo, I moved into this neighborhood and I was scared, but I don't get nothing but love. Mm. Mm. I don't get nothing but neighborliness and protection from them." But for the male portion of it, nah, we can't be sensitive. We can't smile. We can't do any of these things. Mm. And well, for a certain sector of us, mm. for for the grown folk. It's, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's easy. Mm -hmm. But if you weren't taught that way, if you weren't, if you were brought up to be, you got to be hard. Mm -hmm. You got to hold your feelings in. You got to mm -hmm. be a man. Mm -hmm. This is all that you know. Because mm -hmm. unfortunately, in the black community, we, and I'm not, I don't want to blame anybody, and I don't want to get canceled or yelled at. Mm -hmm. But in the black community, black women are quick to tell somebody, you soft, mm -hmm. you gay, mm -hmm. you ain't a real man. Mm -hmm. So if you're hearing this from somebody that supposedly, quote unquote, loves you, mm -hmm. how can I come to you in, mm -hmm. time, in times of weakness? Mm -hmm. When I show my vulnerable side and I express to you that I'm human like everybody else, even though the black man is supposed to be the most robotic person on earth. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I let you into who I am as a person, 100% holistically. Mm -hmm. And then I go about and I hear you talking on the phone to your girlfriends. He's soft as I don't know what. Mm. This punk out here sitting there showing his feelings. Mm. Yes, and you're right, Brian. Black men are quick to say that to you. Mm. They're quick to they're quick to tell you that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we had some times where dudes would be like, "Yo, you look good in that outfit." What? Huh? Mm. You can't say that to another man. You know what I'm saying? Without somebody being like, "Yo." No homo. Pause. Facts. You know what Facts. I'm saying? Like we can't, we can't do that because society has painted us into a corner. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So we have to represent, once again, not all of us, just those that don't know any better or weren't, weren't taught any better, mm-hmm. especially in, in the single parent household where a young man is brought up by his mother only. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because now you got to be the man of the house, mm-hmm. but you're only six years old. Mm-hmm. How are you going to be the man of the house at six? Facts. So now you have to be tough and be strong for your older sisters, mm-hmm. for your mother. So these these are taught behaviors. So, you know, I agree, bro. Uh, about a month ago, I came out with a song as you know, it's mid to the episode. You might go on. Oh. As you know, a month or so ago, I came out with a uh, I premiered a song called "Love Me," right. right? And in that song, whether they caught it or not, it was an older hip hop. I personally feel like. I love hip hop in its infancy stages. Back when it was just, if you know, you know. I felt like it was the purest. I felt like it was the realest, you know? I feel like when hip hop started, when they realized the money that can be had in hip hop, yes, we've been swindled them from the very beginning, but when they felt that they can benefit off of it, that's when everything became everything. I'm going to explain through this particular clip. Check this out. Funny thing with hip hop, right? Mm-hmm. We're labeled as thugs, hooligans, gangsters. Um, People that don't know that 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 aren't educated on how to uh, spend their finances, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they making money off of us. Every commercial got a rap in it. Every TV show got somebody trying to be a rapper or a gangster or, or somebody hip hop influence. Hip hop is everywhere. It's influenced by everybody. You know what kills me, bro, is people don't want to be us but they love pretending to be us in the hip-hop community how bizarre is that i mean it's it's not bizarre at all because they want to be us outside of the hip-hop community Mm -hmm. i mean this goes this goes back to certain people wanting to get a tan Mm. You tease us about dark skin, but you lay out in the sun, you go to tanning salons, you put on tan and lotion to have a darker hue. Hmm. Now, and you remember when we grew up, mm-hmm. it was anorexia city. Mm-hmm. Everybody mm-hmm. wanted to be 80 pounds mm-hmm. and, and look like a half skeleton. Mm-hmm. Now everybody wants a big butt, some big breasts, and some big lips. Which is funny, bro, because back in the day, people used to get teased about their lips. Yep. But now they get the injections. I, I digress, man. I digress, man. Hip hop, man. I love the culture, man. We need to spin the narrative. It's not all bad. It's not all good. But it's hip hop. It's a way of life. This is what we do. Check this out, bro. Why does hip hop oftentimes feel like public enemy number one in courtrooms? Well, for one, because it's honest. Hmm because it tells the truth that a lot of people who probably don't live in these conditions would like to believe don't exist. Hey, I love Tip's answer. But I, 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 I'll be honest with you, man. Do we always look out for each other? Do we always take up for each other in situations when things go down in this cancel culture era? If we, somebody get canceled or don't look good, it's almost like we put uh, gasoline on the fire. Would you agree, bro? Mm-hmm. But let me go back to the previous one, because we didn't answer that question. Gotcha. No, I don't think that hip-hop has influenced pop culture. Hmm. I think that hip-hop has become pop culture. Mm. It has overtaken it. So mm. it doesn't influence it at all. It, 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 hip-hop is the norm. Hip-hop is what's popular right now across the world. 
across. Mm. I don't care what race, religion you have. I was looking at um, TikTok the other day, mm -hmm. and I was looking at some Hindi rappers, mm. and they were rapping in their language. Mm. Asia, like mm. hip hop is everywhere. But for, as far as hip hop, as far as looking out for each other, we can't. They can't look out for each other because in the infancy stage in hip hop's purest form, or what we think is the purest form because mm -hmm. we grew up in it hip-hop was about individuality mm. hip-hop was about being you doing your style doing your own thing nowadays it's copy paste rinse repeat <laughs> so now you have more competition because we're all trying to do the exact same thing mm. and we have to do something that stands out from the next person so mm. yeah i'm not looking out for you bro i'm trying to get mine mm. I'm trying to do for me. If you happen to come along with me, cool. Because so many of these rappers could combine forces and do some amazing things musically. But it's all about, I guess, quote unquote, being the hottest, who can get the most clicks and the most likes and the most spins. It's not mm. about bringing people up. Unfortunately, this is how it's been in, in the music business, not even just hip hop. It's just the music business and what has been taught from generation to generation. Mm. People are always out for themselves record labels, managers, a and R's, producers, mm. all of them. Everybody's out for themselves. It's all about that mighty dollar. Mm. Can you imagine if we all stuck together? Like, how many rappers have labels? You know what I'm saying? What if we just had one? I digress. Because I know, already know the answer. Because you, an you, you, you know the answer. Because your man's a billionaire. And could do all of these things, mm -hmm. but he rather go and say he don't care about the Super Bowl, hmm. but then be about the NFL. Mm. But I digress. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it's the part of the show, man. I love the most. Y'all check this out. Let's go. I'm going to start with the not so good news, right? Unfortunately, we had a couple of passes um, in the month of April. Mr. C passed. OJ Simpson passed, man. And my bro um, from Organized Noise, Organized Confusion. It breaks my heart, man. I feel like in hip hop, man, maybe because we're growing old with it, people are going way too soon, man. Way too soon. So check this out, man. They signed Outkast, you know what I'm saying? Organized Noise were responsible for signing us to the Face Records through a production deal. So without Rico Wade, Pat, Pat Sleepy Brown, and Ray Murray, there would be no outcast. From 1984 to 1994, Mr. C was my DJ. From 10th grade to the Daddy's Home album, Mr. C was my DJ. From cursing me out about touching the turntables at a park jam, all the way to cursing me out about not calling him for a photo shoot, Mr. C was my DJ. OJ was a two-time unanimous All-American from USC. Y'all know he loved the Trojans and he also loved Caleb Williams. Um, he's a 1968 Heisman Trophy winner. The Buffalo Bills selected him as the number one overall pick in the 1969 NFL Draft. Man, it's crazy, man. Rico Wade, man, I'm going to say it this time, man. He is my age. Hey, well, no, I'm not even at age yet. I'll be that age at um, the end of this month. How scary is that, bro? Mr. C, man. It it, 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 it saddens me. I, I, I guess realistically, and we kind of talked about this last week, man. Everybody, I mean, it's death is guaranteed, man. But it seems like it's always too soon. And man, they talk about OJ. I know this is this is uh, your forte with 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 sports, right? Mm -hmm. But man, do they forget all of the stuff that OJ did, man? His legacy his mm -hmm. accomplishments 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I feel like, man, OJ paid the way for people like a Ray Lewis or number eight. You get what I'm saying? Because of where he comes. What's your thoughts on OJ? You don't want my thoughts on OJ. Okay. You really, you really don't want my thoughts on OJ. We don't. Because we want to keep it. But since we're already here. <laughs> man, I... keep in mind, he's resting in power. Okay. And we all going to rest in power one day. It's, it's, it's just so. And listen. Condolences to his family and friends and, and loved ones. But when people pass, don't we say this is cause for celebration? Not because of their passing, but just because of the life that they've lived. Facts. So just because somebody's passed, now we're supposed to skirt around the truth? Mm. We're supposed, we supposed to dance around subjects because somebody passed away? Like, I didn't wish that man to be gone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He was a great NFL running back. But I just, mm. I just had one question. Did OJ go to white heaven or black heaven? <laughs> it's my only question I had, like, oh, you know, because he really didn't—he really didn't too much care for black people till white people disowned him. Mm. Yeah, yeah I man. But I mean, listen, he—he he did, in all seriousness, he did pave the way for athletes to kind of turn the corner and become sideline analysts uh, for sports. Mm-hmm. He also was able to get or be one in the forefront to getting athletes roles in movies. And I think one of his biggest accomplishments was him getting endorsement deals mm-hmm. after his playing days with Doc. Because if a lot of people don't remember, he was the, uh, one of the original ones with Hertz mm-hmm. car rental. Mm-hmm. They signed him to a very long deal. Mm-hmm. So he, he did pave the way from for a lot of things and a lot of people. But as far as it's his accomplishments it's that he's done on the field, people are going to overlook them for what he did outside of the arena. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, sometimes we judge people. Some people say judge people for their art and not their person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Reg, I'm not saying having segregated, but OJ just didn't like to associate with black people. Mm. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, he might be in limbo. <laughs> he, just, he just didn't like to associate. But, you know, you know, the kind of people that's like, I'm not black. I'm not white. I'm just here. Mm. He, was, he was one of those people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he is the biggest lie in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's, fact. That's a fact, right? He's the biggest lie in the world. And for those of you that don't know, when they did that trial and they asked him to put that glove on. Oh, here we no, go. No, I'm just I'm just gonna say this. I'm just gonna say this. Because it was hilarious to me. I oh, mean the situation yeah. wasn't hilarious because unfortunately two people lost their lives. But the hilarious part to me was when they asked him to put the glove on during the trial. Mm-hmm. He, for the first time in his life, was actually white. Because mm. he turned white as a ghost. If you ever watched the series, the documentary, watch him. They turned, asked him to put that glove on. He sat there and turned white as a ghost. But then watch when he put the plastic glove on first. Mm. And, he, and he put the blood-drenched gloves on that shrank. Because mm. that's what's going to happen. And, it, and he could see that it didn't fit. Mm. Watch how his whole aura just switched up. Mm. And he started getting cocky and posing. Like, look, 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 see? See, yeah. see, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, like, oh, he's a li- he's a liar, and we all know he did it, and you know, I well, mean, I ain't gonna hold you, bro. He went down in history because I want to say that's the first time, maybe one of the last times, that in the judicial system it went in our favor. He messed it up with everybody else. That's grand. <laughs> he messed up. Yeah, yeah, man. Everybody been talking about Diddy. Diddy chilling. Will he go? Diddy do it. But man, guess who else been talking about Diddy? G Dep, man. And check out what he had to say about Diddy, man. You gonna love this. I'm not. You're telling me you got just under 400 songs that you wrote when you were inside, okay. and you got a message for for Puff Daddy right now. Facts. I'm saying, you know, got a lot of songs, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for you. You know, so we could get, you know, some type of musical situation going, you know, it is what it is, man. We need to get this thing going, man. So, you know, I'll let you for it, man. How about this? One of my favorite singers of all time is Murray J. Bloss. I love, love, love Murray. I know you do as well. 
one of the reasons I love Mary Man is because her music comes from a, a space of pain. It, it comes from um, experiences, mm -hmm. life experiences that she went through. I could only imagine with G that pen behind that wall, bro. Now, I'm not failing him reaching out to Diddy, especially right now. Because you can't even hear his stuff on the radio. He's probably the last person. But I get where he's going. I guess he's familiar with Diddy. He knows his work ethic. Uh, I guess. But having that material, man, everybody should be trying to reach out to him. Would you agree? I guess. I guess. <laughs> should they really? I think so, man. I, I feel like, okay, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. We are famous for saying it's not a, in which it's a lie. It's not enough substance out there in hip hop. All right. We need to hear something real. Mm -hmm. We need to hear something that, that you know, that's identifiable. Right. And I think he can draw from that space. It might be what we need right now. It might be. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Like he was one of my he was one of my favorite rappers. Oh yeah. Like yo, do you can spit? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he's in my rotation. Mm -hmm. But, and I'm not comparing this to sports. But when you've been retired for a couple decades, I you might need to want to stay retired. Mm. You know what I mean? Like. You go in your book and be like, uh, oh, yeah, this was good in 99. <laughs> this, this is going to, this is going to be applicable today. Let's go for it. <laughs> okay. Cause okay. my thing, cause, cause you just, cause in all, in all reality, you just, you just set yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up for failure. Now there are, clusters of us that remember who g Deb is right yes mm -hmm. and there are a lot of us that would possibly love to see his love to hear his music mm -hmm. and hear what he has to say mm -hmm. but once again this is not 99 this mm -hmm. is not 2000 mm -hmm. so people aren't buying records mm -hmm. people aren't buying cds mm -hmm. it's a different space if mm -hmm. we want to hear your music we're gonna wait till it gets leaked to you Right. So now you're not going to make the money that you thought you were going to make. Because I can't speculate on this man's lifestyle, but he sounds poor. He just sounded poor in his voice. And you're going to now give yourself hope that you're about to make something and make a comeback. Don't laugh. because this is, you, Am I lying? Am I lying? He sounded like the struggle bus. I'm sorry. So you setting yourself up to like, yeah, this is another payday. I'm going to be good. I'm going to get me some dough. And your album's not going to sell because people aren't buying music. Mm. And people don't want music with substance. Mm. And that I, that, I think, is the bigger problem. That, therein lies the biggest problem of all. Mm. People today, and I don't mean everybody, mm -hmm. but people today don't want music of substance. Mm. And, and like Coco said, you got producers out here making beats and making songs that were lyrics from other songs, from old songs. Mm. I can't listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. And when I do listen to the radio and I hear something, I'm like, yo, that verse sounds really familiar. Mm -hmm. And it's always from another song. Mm -hmm. There's no originality. And mm -hmm. people and the young kids today don't want that. They want a hot hook and a hot beat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, shout out, shout out to G-Dep because now after this, I'm going to go listen to some G-Dep. Oh, yeah, man. I, 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 I say go for <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, Brody. <laughs> yeah, Brody. <laughs> I, I, I feel like music, hip hop, whatever. I think it's all subjective, and I think at this point in life, everybody has an audience. And hey, even if it's just it, look, look at look at who was the painter that 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 passed away, and then after the fact, everybody was like, "Oh man, this is incredible." Which one? <laughs> which one? Right. And that's the point. Well, who knows? He might drop something now and they appreciate it 
10 years from now. Wow, Rage. Wow. Wow, sir. And you, and you put the comment up. See, you don't even read the comments. You just throw, you just throw them up there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow, sir. Yeah, yeah. Wow. How about this, man? Another episode down in the books, man. Powerful one at that. I appreciate y'all as always, man. Hendo, man. I can't wait till next week, man. I think I'm going to give them a sneak peek of what's going down next week. Okay. All right? Do it. Let's go. Who am I to tell you what's hot? Who am I to tell you what's not? Who am I? Wait a minute, stop. Yes, y'all. My EP is coming out. We're going to talk about it, man. How about this? Behind the scenes of the music video? Next week. We're going to premiere the actual video Ooh. on this show. Ooh. It's a dope video. Y'all stay tuned. Man, I am plotting my literary revenge. As always, man. Any last words, bro? LeBron James is on the ground hurt. Oh man. Is mm. he hurt for real? You know, he's an actor. Like, I give him the Emmy. Yeah. I love LeBron, man. Uh, how about this before we go, man? What's your thoughts on his son? Um in that whole NBA? How's that gonna go down? He's gonna get he's gonna go in and he's gonna go to draft one of these years. He's gonna go in the first round because of his father. I love I love Bronny James. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, because like I've always seen the like players that reminded me of people. And to me, Bronny looks like looks like AJ. Mm. And I mm. think that's why I like Bronny so much. Because he reminds me of my son. He looks like my son. Mm -hmm. But I can see that. I yeah, can see I mean, that. Like, I mean, all these little kids for some they look the same a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, I hope he does well. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope he has a long NBA career. Mm -hmm. Breaks some records, makes his dad proud. Cause that's all fathers want like you don't have to outdo your father mm -hmm. his father just wants to see him and go in and do well yeah and yeah. i want to see him do well as well mm -hmm. and i also want to see his father get knocked out the playoffs or not make it to the playoffs oh lord well oh man. miraculously he's up he's walking around like nothing happened bravo sir bravo acting skills on 100. oh lord well until next time y'all we out Relaxation.